Okay, so you've seen the big projects that I've done in 3DS Max and UE5, and I'm ready for a new one. You've seen I've done Hogwarts, I've done Minas Tirith, I've done Ancient Egypt. This one might be cooler than all of those. I'm really excited about it. But before I get started on it, I had this idea that I should go even more next level with this video. And so to do that, I'm going to, well, I'm going to respond to my most frequently heard comment, and that is, 3DS Max sucks, you need to be using Blender. Okay, and I get it, Blender has a huge freelance following, it's free, and 3DS Max is completely not free. So, for the people, I'm going to try and do this one with Blender. Let's see how it goes. I do not know Blender, but I keep hearing about how awesome it is. So let's jump into it. This is Hyrule Castle from Zelda Breath of the Wild. Follow along to see my thoughts about Blender, how it's working, and also to see the results of my model as it develops. I'm excited for this one. Let's go. Oh, that's a good boy. No? So obviously first I just had to download the latest Blender 4.2 is what I'm using. I think that's the latest. And then of course I needed to start with reference images as always. In this case, Hyrule Castle's really hard to figure out using images. And I don't even have the game. I'm not a Nintendo guy. Remember, my nerd credentials totally suck. This project is based on a commenter's suggestion. And I kind of just think it looks cool. So I really needed to figure out what the heck Hyrule Castle actually looks like. It's kind of hard to do, except that I found a basic 3D model that was downloadable, and that gave me the basic layout and massing of the castle. Now, it was made for a 3D print, so it's lacking in detail big time. So it's not sufficient for the cinematic results I want to get eventually, but it does give me the basis to start from. Now, you Zelda nerds have probably already realized Bro, you're building the wrong model. Yeah, I intended to build Breath of the Wild Hyrule, but there's a bunch of other ones too, and I'm building the wrong one. So my search for references would have to continue. But at this point, it doesn't matter. I'm actually just experimenting with Blender and awkwardly trying to make the most basic of shapes. It's so painful for me at this point. It's probably painful for you to watch too because you're like, oh dude, there's an easier way to do that. And I'm like, I know, it's in 3DS Max. I could do this so fast. And yet everything is so hard for me here. But I had to stick to it. I knew it would get better as I went along and these super easy models can't possibly be this tedious and difficult in Blender. Oh hey look, I figured out how to do a basic extrude, and I also discovered the mirror and array modifiers, which I actually love, once I figured out how to use them properly. Okay, obviously YouTube's gonna be my friend here big time, and I found one video that was really, really helpful. Let's see if I can find it again real quick. Here we go. Easy switching to Blender from other 3D software. This was a great video. And they give 10 tips, which I think were all pretty awesome. And they apply directly to a guy like me coming from 3ds Max. So the biggest takeaway from that video was do not try to adapt Blender to be like whatever software you're coming from. And I think this is correct. But the temptation was so hard to resist. The whole time I'm working, I'm just thinking, I know there's some way to do this in 3DS Max. It would be this, this, this. It would be so easy. But in here, I can't figure it out. So I was searching a lot of very niche YouTube videos. How do you do this exact thing in Blender? Of course, once you figure it out, Blender is capable of it, and you just have to change your mindset to do it a different way than you're used to, and that's okay. So the big thing with Blender is that it's really gestural and relies heavily on keyboard shortcuts. I of course didn't know any of them, and that's why everything seems hard. But in the end, when you learn all that stuff and it becomes natural to you, that's gonna be a huge benefit. I love that. Okay, so after I fumbled around in the wrong model for a while, I started to learn some stuff and things started to feel a little bit more natural. 
here I am in the right model and things are kind of starting to work because I've learned the basics of how to do the essential poly modeling commands. I even got the viewport to look kind of like I wanted with the correct model of Hyrule Castle looking kind of frozen, unselectable, and semi-transparent so I could easily model to it. That was a big step. So I'm starting with boxes and then I'm just taking faces and extruding them, insetting them, beveling edges, duplicating things around, instancing things around, using rotations, using mirrors, all the stuff you need to do to do proper poly modeling. And I have to say, I absolutely love poly modeling in Blender. The verdict is still out, but by the end of this, I might like it more than I like poly modeling in 3ds Max. We shall see. Keep watching till the end to see my thoughts on the things I love about Blender versus 3ds Max versus the things I like in 3ds Max better. I'll try to break it down for you with my overall thoughts. But right now I'm finally starting to get into a flow, at least for these simple tasks, and, and I can really start building out my model at this point. As far as I am concerned, there is only one way to learn a new software, and that is to have in mind something you want to create first, then learn the basic UI of the software, and then just jump in working on your project with your goal in mind. For me, the goal was to create a model of Hyrule Castle. So I learned the very, very basics of Blender, and then I just jumped in. Everything else I'm doing as I go. So I come to a point where I say, how do you do this? I go to YouTube, I figure out how to do that specific thing, I apply it, and now I've learned it. So after I do that many, many, many times, at some point it just feels like, okay, things are going smoothly, I'm looking at YouTube less and less, and things are just starting to work. I feel like I sort of know what I'm doing at this point. Obviously, there will be many, many other parts of Blender that I do not know yet, but for the task that I'm trying to complete, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at. This might take more or less time for you depending on what your experience in 3D is. But for me, it seriously only took a few days before I was feeling quite comfortable with poly modeling in Blender. And like I said, I'm really enjoying it. Now, along the way, you will inevitably discover something in your new software that you think, whoa, this is amazing and way better than any software I've used before. For me, in Blender, it's obvious what that is. I think this is the coolest thing about Blender, and that is that sculpting is integrated directly in. You can seamlessly go from poly modeling to sculpting your poly models so smoothly and the tools are very robust. If you've used ZBrush before, you know that that workflow, 3ds Max to ZBrush, or even probably Blender to ZBrush, is awkward, and ZBrush UI feels very foreign to me at least. But here, it's just built in. The tools are very similar. The sculpting all makes sense, it's intuitive, and it is built right in. I absolutely love this feature of Blender, amazing. 3ds Max cannot do this. There are some plugins for it, but nothing is as clean as this. Okay, I don't want to just bore you with a bunch of poly modeling, so while that's going in the background, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel. Especially if you think this video is useful or if any of the projects and information that I share are useful or interesting. This project ends up being a lot of poly modeling so far, but this is just the beginning. I'm going to take this much further, eventually take it into Unreal Engine, make cinematic movies of it, and of course my exploration with Blender will continue. So make sure to like this video, but also subscribe so you don't miss any of that upcoming content.
Now in this project, I still need to get to some of the finishing touches, show you how I did them, some unique techniques that I used, some things I really liked about Blender, and we still need to talk about my overall thoughts. But before we get to all of that, let's just do a quick time lapse showing me finishing up the main parts of the castle and the structures in the scene. Of course, using the same poly modeling techniques that I have been using, which I have now completely mastered and am absolutely pro at. Just kidding, not really, but it was working pretty well and I think this is coming together really, really nice. At this point, it's just a matter of doing the work, adding the details, getting everything looking nice. Yeah, typical 3D project. The next thing I'll have to figure out is the terrain. So let's check that out right now. Okay, with the structures mostly wrapped up, I wanted to focus a little bit on this terraced landscape that winds its way up to the castle. So I did a few interesting things here. You might have noticed that I was just copying around planes, but they had thickness to them, and that was using the solidify modifier, which I figured had to exist because there is something called the shell modifier in 3ds Max, and that's how I would have done that there in Blender it's solidify. So it's adding thickness to this thing. And I figured out that if I just do it like this, it will build in the blocking. And then I can hopefully use a subdivide modifier. And then I can just take it into the sculpting and start carving some definition into these clips. Turns out that works really, really well. I actually love the results of what I'm getting here. And again, it was so easy, specifically because, well, modifiers were built in that made it really easy to create this. And then the sculpting capability is built right in. And it's all so intuitive, so fast, so easy, so smooth. And it's giving me exactly the look that I wanted for this terrain. So with that working, now we're really getting close to a finished product, at least on the modeling. Obviously there's much more to do. That's gonna be in later videos. Let's check out my finished model and then we'll talk about my thoughts about blender and how i feel about it after creating this fairly complex model okay i'm using my space mouse here to navigate around just to kind of show the full model and let me tell you, using the Space Mouse in Blender, especially when combined with doing your sculpting, the Space Mouse is epic. Couldn't do without it on this project. Okay, let's check out some rendered images of it too, though. Okay, so you saw my model. I think it looks actually super cool. It's not perfect or anything, but it will definitely be a really good base to create some awesome cinematics with in UE5. Cannot wait to do that. Subscribe in order to see that content when it's ready. You may have noticed at the end there, I had some glamour shots of my model. I did cheat a little bit and take those into V-Ray because I need to get this video out. I spent a super long time modeling and I'm not quite ready to jump into all the texturing and rendering of Blender yet. That too will come up in later videos. So for the sake of generating some really nice images and a thumbnail, I took it into V-Ray and did the way I know how to do it, rendered some still shots. Hopefully you think it looks cool and hopefully you're excited for where this can go. If you are, feel free to download the model yourself. I'll make it available. You can adjust it, do what you want with it. I don't know what the price is gonna be yet, but check the links below. I always try to make my stuff as accessible as possible with super cheap prices. So go ahead and grab it if you want to mess around with it. Now, we need to talk about Blender. 
What are my thoughts on Blender? Well, first of all, all the comments of, you're stupid for using Max. Blender's so much better. Um, I still have my doubts about that. I stand by what I've said before. These programs can do the same stuff, except for the sculpting. That is just awesome. And I've heard the complaint that Max is not advancing at the same speed as Blender. That is probably true because when you have Autodesk, I mean, yeah, 3DS Max is not advancing quickly. Let's just put it that way. But what do I really like about Blender? It does things, everything's a little bit different. That's where personal preference comes in. So what I will say about 3DS Max is that it is more geared, I feel, towards what I do the majority of the time, and that is architectural visualization. 3ds Max has more tools geared towards that. So like the robust spline tools in there, I find very helpful. I use them a lot because that makes sense for architecture. I like the way two and a half D snaps work in 3ds Max. Um, yeah, and maybe that's just me being used to one and not the other, I don't know. But let me talk about some of the things I absolutely love about Blender. Poly modeling. Poly modeling is amazing in Blender. I love the way that it works. It's super intuitive once you get the hang of it. Everything is gestural. I love the fact like, for example, if you're creating an edge loop, you can use your center dial on your mouse to tell it how many edge loops to create. And same with like a chamfer, you can add segments into your chamfers, use your center scroll wheel. I mean, that kind of stuff is awesome. I love that. I love the fact that you can easily isolate your object and add to it in edit mode and then unisolate it and go back to your full scene. Just the, the workflow I find to be super smooth and super nice, specifically for poly modeling. And that's about as far as I've gotten with it so far, obviously, but I do love it for poly modeling. Do I like it better than 3ds Max for poly modeling? Yes, I think I do, actually. But do I like it better as an overall workflow for architectural visualization? That I don't know. And again, maybe that's my own weakness in Blender. You guys let me know in the comments. I want to know what you thought of my model. If you think this is a good first project, a solid first project. If you think it looks cool, if you're a Zelda fan, let me know if this is a, if this is a cool project or not. Let me know all the things that I said that are wrong about Blender. Why I don't know what I'm talking about, because I'm sure that's true. You know, where I've gone wrong on Blender. You probably saw some things on the screen where you're like, dude, there's a way easier way to do that. Let me know what it is. I'm learning. But overall, let me just say I loved making this project in Blender. So I am going to continue my journey. I want you to follow along with me. Let me know in the comments, the other things that I need to know, the things that I'm missing, what else you want to see me do with this project, whatever. I want your feedback. Thanks for following along. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one where we take this project even further.